Thank you for 1 million subscribers, everybody. This video is dedicated 100% to all of you. Now about this video, this is a sous vide machine. It is reliable, it is also accurate, and most importantly, it is fun. Some of the methods you are about to see, they do work, but they are not even close to this thing here. And I hope you enjoy it. Check it out. And we're gonna start off with the dishwasher, because why not? And for that, I chose this beautiful ribeye steak. As you can see, it is a prime grade ribeye. And you can clearly tell that because of the marbling of this wonderful steak. The first thing to do is to always add your seasoning. And I like to transfer to a steak plate so that I don't lose any of the seasoning. I started with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. To me, that's the perfect seasoning for any steak. Sure, you can add a lot more different types of seasoning, but if you really wanna taste beef, keep it simple. And by the way, if this is the first time you're watching, never put any butter or any type of fat inside of the bag. That actually dilutes the flavor and makes your steak not taste as good. Now, if you don't want to use any special equipment, including a vacuum chamber or a vacuum sealer, you can just use a regular Ziploc bag. I'll tell you one thing, this works, but it is by far not the best thing to do. This bag was not made for sous vide, and it can also be very easy to rupture. And imagine you're putting a $30 piece of steak inside of this bag and then it ruptures in the middle of the cook. That is your worst case scenario. And whenever you're using Ziplocs like this, your chances just increase tremendously. But hey, if you don't have a vacuum sealer, this is your best bet. So after adding the steak inside of the bag, you want to close it almost towards the end. Just leave a little air gap like this. Then you want to submerge it in water. And what this does is that it allows all the airs to come out through that little space that you just left open. Sink the bag in the water and just close the end. And once you're done, this is what you're left with. As you can see, it works quite well. It did not remove 100% of the air out, but most of it is completely gone. Keep in mind one thing. The more air you have inside of the bag, the more you will float. So do try to get all of the air out as much as possible. Your other option is to use a vacuum sealer. I mean, take a look at this one. If you don't have one, you should. It not only helps you cook sous vide, but also seal your food perfectly for freezing. It is a great tool in the kitchen and something that I cannot live without. This one is very inexpensive. And if you try to get the best of the best, I definitely recommend a vacuum chamber. Those can be quite pricey. But the bags are 10 times stronger than anything you can find. And some of the methods that we're gonna be cooking today, we're gonna put this thing to a real test. So even though I can use the Ziploc bags to make sure I'm not gonna have any rupture, I will be using for every single cook the vacuum chamber. This ensures me consistency and the only thing that can really fail is the actual method. Method, not the bag. Once I was done vacuum sealing it, it was ready for the dishwasher. That just sounds so wrong. I opened up my dishwasher and threw my steak in there. I want you to notice that there is no soap and also there is absolutely no dirty dishes. I did not do anything special to my dishwasher, I just clicked on start. And as you can see, it's gonna go for a total of 86 minutes. Once the time was up, it was time to take it out. And this is what I was left with. That, my friends, is a sous vide steak inside of the dishwasher. It feels like a sous vide steak, and it also looks like a sous vide steak, which is a terrible look. But just like every single steak that is cooked sous vide, you must put a beautiful crust. And of course, in order to get that, you gotta pat it dry. That removes most of the moisture so that we can go right ahead into the browning. Talking about that, for this steak, I'm gonna be using my flamethrower. One thing you gotta keep in mind whenever you're using your flamethrower is to keep your distance. If you get too close, you will have a torch taste. And that is the last thing you want. And now I can say, that is a perfect dishwasher steak. But the ultimate test is really when you take out the first slice. And when I did, whoa, edge to edge perfection medium rare. Exactly what you're looking for in every steak. The thought of cooking your steak in a dishwasher is absolutely disturbing. But when you get results like this, the only thing you gotta do is not think about it. And do not tell your family members that it was cooked in the dishwasher. But the most important thing is always the taste. And as I take my first bite, nice. It is just like a sous vide steak. And if you're just trying to cook one steak or if you're trying to cook multiple steak, if you do everything right and all the stars align, the dishwasher works. Just remember one thing, don't tell anybody you cooked it on the dishwasher. The cooler method. Yes, cooking a steak with a cooler. And for that, we're gonna be using this beautiful T-bone steak. For sous vide, I usually recommend thick steaks at least one and a half inches thick but since we're gonna be doing a cooler steak thinner is actually better and this one is one inch thick of course the first thing we gotta start off with is the seasoning and just like I mentioned on the previous one I like to keep it simple so I can taste the beef only salt freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder nothing else whenever you're cooking anything that has bone sous vide you must protect it if not you're just gonna rupture the bag and for a bone guard, you can just cut one bag in half and just place it right on top of the bone. It's kind of like double bagging without actually using an additional bag. Now all you have to do is vacuum sealer or just use the water displacement method. 
Now let's talk about the cooler method. For that, you will be needing a few things. A cooler, of course, but I will also recommend using a thermometer. I started by putting a little bit of water in the pan. Using my thermometer, I heat it up to a total of 135 degrees Fahrenheit, which to me is the perfect temperature for most steaks. If the temperature goes a little bit higher, I throw in some ice. And if it goes just a little bit too low, I adjust the heat. Once 135 degrees Fahrenheit was reached, I did the most of the stupidest thing you could do. As you can already tell, that was not very smart. But now that you've seen how I was able to control the temperature, it's time to throw in some water inside of the cooler. Using my thermometer, I threw it in and added some hot water. And I'm talking about some boiling hot water. Now you must stir the water. The idea is to keep all of the water the same temperature. And if you don't move it around, that will not happen. Try to do everything you can to keep it at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. That is the ultimate goal. And as you saw it previously, if it gets too hot, just throw some ice. And if it gets cold, just add a little bit of boiling water. Once the temperature has been stabilized, throw your steak in. You want to cook the steak for at least one hour. Don't forget to stir the water every 15 minutes. But most importantly, keep an eye on that temperature. I'll tell you one thing, this is a total pain in and it's absolutely ridiculous. But hey, if you've never had sous vide and you want to give this method a go, this is what I was left with. As I'm holding the steak and taking it out of the bag, I can tell you one thing, it feels like a sous vide steak. And of course, you have to pat it dry to make sure you get a good crust. And just like every single one of them, I know they don't look that good right now. You can use several different methods for a crust, but for this one, I'm going to be using a very special grill. It's basically a salamander, which gets to 500 degrees Fahrenheit to put a beautiful sear on the steak. But of course, if you don't have this one, you can use many different methods which you will see throughout the whole video. The great thing about this salamander is that it's quick and the end result is always perfection. After seeing you both sides, I present to you the cooler steak. That looks way better than before, doesn't it? The one thing you always gotta look for is a nice crust and this one have it. Now all there's left to do is to give it a try. And I started by carving out the New York strip followed by the filet mignon. As I took my first slice, Oof, that is perfect. Edge to edge perfection right there. Yes, the method is a pain in the butt. You have to be sitting there watching it. You can't do anything else with your life. It is extremely inconvenient and something I will probably never do in my life. But I guess once you get results like this, it is worth it. Because come on, this looks fantastic. And it's always exactly what you're looking for a perfectly done steak. But the important thing is the taste. And when I went in for my first bite, yes, it is good. It did take forever. I can do anything for a long time but sit down and watch a steak. But yes, it did work. And if you don't have a sous vide machine, you can definitely give this one a try. I know you're gonna ask me about the filet mignon, and it seems like it was a little bit overcooked. But hey, I gotta give it to this method, it did work. The dryer steak. Yes, exactly where you dry your clothes. For that, we're gonna be using this beautiful New York strip. And as you can see, this one is one and a half inches thick. It is the perfect steak to be cooked sous vide. Just like I mentioned previously, I kept it simple with salt, freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Vacuum sealed it and it was ready. To ensure that the bag was not gonna break and also ruin my dryer, I decided to put it on some towels. Because of course, the last thing you want is your wife to be really mad at you because she's putting on her clothes and it smells like a steak. You really Really don't want that to happen. I can speak from experience. Tight both ends real tight. As you can see by the time I was done, this is what I got. It's now ready for the dryer. The easiest thing to do now is throw it in and close the door. My dryer had a special setting which is called steam sanitary. I was initially going to use that but then I thought not everybody has this setting. So let's keep it normal. And for that I put it on the regular setting. Pressed play and let it go for a total of two cycles which was a total of two hours. And once that was done I was excited to find out how this was going to work. So I removed the butcher's twine and opened it up. And as I did, oh, oh no. After two hours, you can clearly see that it's still 100% raw. I mean, check out the edge. You can really tell because there's not a lot of spices there. What a disappointment. And as I took it out of the bag, check it out. Yep, that is 100% raw. The dry does not have enough heat to cook the steak. But of course, to be 100% sure, I opened it up. Yep, it is totally raw. The dryer, friends, does not work. But if you think I'm gonna throw away this steak, you're absolutely insane. I just sliced it up and stir fry it and it was absolutely fantastic. Do not use your dryer to cook a steak. It would not work. The next one I'm gonna try out is using my smoker to sous vide. Yes, I know that sounds absolutely insane, but hey, we're gonna give this a go. And for that, I'm using this beautiful flat iron steak. It is one of those steaks that is extremely tender but also very flavorful. If you like to taste beef, this is the one to have it. Of course, as you already know, I kept the seasoning exactly the same with salt, freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder. Threw it in the bag, vacuum sealed it and it was ready 
little bit sous vide inside of my smoker. For that, of course, I use the cast iron pan and a little bit of water. My thought is that cast iron pan is perfect because it will retain a lot of heat. And at the same time, I can use the ice method to bring the temperature down if it gets way too hot. I set my smoker to the lowest setting. Threw the pan in there, added my thermometer and kept controlling the temperature. Don't forget, if it gets too hot, throw in some ice. And every 15 minutes, make sure you stir the water. One thing you don't want to forget is to flip the steak to make sure it cooks evenly. But after doing this complete nonsense after an hour and a half, this is my sous vide steak done in a smoker. And as you can see, it looks like it worked perfectly. It looks exactly like a sous vide steak. And as always, you gotta pat it dry. For the searing, I'm gonna be using the cast iron together with some butter basting. Since the flat iron does not have a lot of fat, this method is perfect to finish the steak. The secret is to first sear it for one minute per side. Once that's done, throw in a little bit of butter and also rosemary. Time also works great. To finish off the steak, you want to baste it for one minute. Once that's done, you should have a perfectly sous vide steak done on a smoker just like this. I can honestly say that this is the most ridiculous method I've tried. But hey, if you ever wanted to cook something else and try out sous vide because you don't have a sous vide machine, you might want to give this method a try. Because as I took a slice, look at that. To say that it is perfection is an understatement. That flat iron there is cooked exactly the way I like it. This steak is not only nice and juicy, but extremely flavorful. And as I went to take a bite to make sure Sure, yes, it did not disappoint. Very nice, strong, beefy flavor, but most important, it is delicious and something you gotta give it a go. Moving on to the next one, it is gonna be a sous vide steak cooked on a toaster oven. And for that, I'm gonna be using these two beautiful filet mignons. As you already might know, this is the most tender part of the cow, and it is one of the most popular steaks in the United States. To season it, I kept it the same with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. So I threw it in the bag, vacuum sealed it, and it was ready. To hold the water, I'm gonna be using a mini cast iron Dutch oven. Just like the smoker, this will actually hold its heat so it's perfect. Be sure whenever you add in the water to submerge it 100%. Now all there's left to do is to put it on the toaster oven and see how this is gonna work. I set my toaster oven to 135 degrees Fahrenheit for a total of 2 hours. Without using any thermometer and only trusting my oven, the only thing you really gotta do is every 15 minutes you gotta move that water. That will ensure that the steak will cook evenly. You also wanna flip the steak at least once. I did it about 3 times while it was cooking. And once the time had elapsed, this is what I was left with. It does look like it was cooked perfectly, but you're only gonna be able to tell it 100% after you you put a beautiful sear on it. So after patting it dry, I decided to go with the butter basting method. So I heated up the pan to medium high heat and threw in the steak. Gave it one minute per side and it was time to flip. Threw in half a stick of butter, thyme and started the basting. Just like fat iron, filet mignon does not have a lot of fat, so the basting butter method is perfect for this steak. You want to baste it for about one minute. And do not let your butter burn. You want brown butter but not black butter. And once you're done with the butter basting, don't forget to add extra butter on top. That will always make your steak a lot better. But to tell if this method really works, we gotta slice it open. And once I did, look at this. Oh yeah, that looks like it worked perfectly. If you have an oven that you can set it to as low as 135 degrees Fahrenheit and you don't mind going over there every 15 minutes to flip the steak and stir it, you're gonna end up with these results. But of course, the most important thing is actually the taste. And when I went for my first bite, oh yeah, that's good. That's real good. It was cooked perfectly. It tastes good. And most important thing, because it was cooked under vacuum, you really keep all of those juices. It is a nice, juicy, flavorful steak and exactly the way I like it. This method is one of the easiest methods we've tried today and it does work. It is still not as convenient as regular sous vide because you gotta go in there, stir the water and stir the steak and do all of that good stuff, but it does work. The next one is gonna be for all college students out there. If you don't have anything else but a microwave, we're gonna cook a sous vide microwave steak. And I have no idea if this is gonna work. And for that, I'm gonna be using a skirt steak. I kept the seasoning simple with salt, freshly ground black pepper and garlic powder, as you already know. And especially if you are a college student, this is all you need right here. Threw it in the bag, vacuum sealed it and it was ready for the microwave. Keep in mind to use a microwave safe container. And this Pyrex will work just great. Threw the water in there and heat it up for a total of four minutes. Once the time was up, I got my thermometer to make sure that it 
reached 135 degrees Fahrenheit and it didn't. So I had to go for an additional two more minutes. Once the temperature reached 135 degrees Fahrenheit, I threw my steak in there, shut the door and it stayed there for 15 minutes. Once the 15 minutes was up, I opened the door and shook the water and surprisingly it was still at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. But if for whatever reason it is not, you know how to heat up the water and you know how to bring the temperature down if necessary as well. After two hours trying to keep the temperature as close as possible to 135 degrees Fahrenheit, this is what I got. To really see if it works, we gotta open up the bag and put it on the cooling rack. And if you made it this far through the video, you already can tell that it looks like it was cooked. And that is perfect for any college student to give it a try. But of course, it does not look that good right now. For that, we gotta pet it dry and put a beautiful sear on it. And I'm thinking we should go caveman style on the steak. You wanna make sure you get those embers real hot. Because as soon as you put your steak in, it will immediately start to cool down. As it's searing and it's getting a nice crust, every time you flip the steak, Steak, you also want to move the charcoal because believe it or not the steak will actually put the whole charcoal out so every time you flip you want a complete new side because the ultimate goal is always this a perfectly seared steak and even though the caveman method is not one of my favorite methods it does work because as I started with my first slice look at that sous vide steak on the microwave everybody I can't believe I'm putting those words together and as I continue to slice them you can tell that it's nice and juicy and even though this method is time-consuming and a tremendous this pain it actually works if you have time to keep stirring that water keep an eye on it and make sure that it's always at 135 degrees Fahrenheit and lose two hours of your life you can do this everybody because that's a nice juicy steak right there and it was done inside of the microwave and as I take my first bite that is good it's perfect not much to be said everybody it actually works and like I said if all you have is a microwave and a lot of patience this can be done I'll tell you one thing though I'll never do this again moving on to the next one we're going to be using one of the easiest method of them all and that's just basically using a pan on top of a hot plate and for that i'm going to be using the queen of all meats this is picanha and it is my favorite meat of all times to season it it is disrespectful to use anything else but salt but hey, if you're gonna use garlic powder and also freshly ground black pepper, I will not judge you. You are the master of your own steak. Season it however you like it. For me, I will always respect the queen and only salt, nothing else. Back that up and it was ready to be cooked sous vide in a pan. I think by this time you already know exactly what to do. The important thing is try to do everything you can to keep that temperature at 135 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember to use ice if it goes too high and of course if it goes too low, just put the heat up. Maintain the temperature for a total of two hours. And don't forget to flip it and also stir the water. You're basically doing all the work of a sous vide machine by hand. But once the two hours is done, you should be left with something like this. And if you could smell the queen, you will be in love just like I am. To give the queen the proper treatment, I am going to be petting it dry. Because as you know, it does not look that good right now. But watch this. I do not have to tell you how the queen tastes. If there's one thing I can tell you, it is the best of the best. That is a piece of steak that never gets old. It is my favorite steak. And if you are ever in my parties, you will know one thing is for sure. There will always be picanha for everyone. These are all the methods I'm able to cook sous vide without an actual sous vide machine. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do enjoy it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in any of the equipment I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. If you have any methods that you guys tried at home that you would like to see maybe on a second episode, put it in the comments down below. Once again, thank you for 1 million subscribers. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.